אדוארד סנודן הפך השנה לאחד המדליפים החשובים והמפורסמים אי פעם. המסמכים הסודיים ביותר שסיפק לכלי תקשורת הוכיחו כיצד אמריקה מבצעת האזנות המוניות, כולל לדוגמה לטלפון האישי של אנגלה מרקל ומנהיגים אחרים. גלן גרינוולד כתב עיתון הגרדיאן הבריטי שחשף את המסמכים ונמצא בקשר קרוב גם היום עם סנודן הנמלט, מעניק הערב לחדשות 10 רעיון מיוחד. גלן גרינוולד, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Many argue that Edward Snowden, by publishing these top secret documents, changed the world. I assume you agree. They changed the world in, in a lot of different ways. They caused the first ever real serious debate about the value of Internet freedom and individual privacy in the digital age and the dangers of state surveillance. I think they've changed how people think about journalism vis-a-vis -vis the state, about the dangers of... extreme secrecy and about the role of the United States in the world. So I think, yeah, the, it's changed in, in all sorts of important ways. The publication of these documents and Snowden's escape sound like something from an espionage thriller. Can you tell me a bit about your first meeting with him? Sure, I met with him in, in Hong Kong along with uh, the filmmaker and journalist Laura Poitras, with whom I had been working, uh, where I proceeded to spend roughly six hours asking him every question multiple different times about who he was and why he had done it. What I found was that this was someone extremely honest and trustworthy and reliable, that he was exactly who he said he was, that he was very intelligent and had thought a great deal about the choices that he had made, and, and that gave us a great deal of confidence in reporting on the documents that he had provided us. Knowing that you're holding extremely classified materials of the U.S. government, to what extent were you all worried for your safety? I think we all realized that there were serious risks involved in what we were doing when you are taking tens of thousands of top secret documents from the world's most secretive agency of the world's most powerful government. Of course, you're undertaking all kinds of legal risks and other types of risks as well. Obviously, we continue to be threatened with legal prosecution by the UK government. There's a question about whether I can safely return to my own country in the United States without being arrested. Obviously, Edward Snowden himself. faces very serious felony charges that could send him to prison for the next three decades, if not the rest of his life. So the risks are very real, and we're all aware of that, but we've just decided not to let them deter us. Many in the U.S., from left to right, call Mr. Snowden a traitor. Secretary of State Kerry said recently that the United States might be attacked because of what Snowden did. How do you react to that? People in power want to operate in the dark, and when you shine light on what they're doing, they lash out and they try and demonize you, and they say, oh, you've made us more unsafe and uh, vulnerable to terrorists, you're a traitor, the same script over and over and over again. The reality is, is that when you catch your government doing things in secret that it shouldn't be doing, at least doing without people knowing about it in a democracy, That's actually the ultimate act of patriotism. You're defending the Constitution, as Mr. Snowden did. You're defending democracy. You're enabling the values that your own government claims it's devoted to to actually be vindicated rather than trampled on and violated. And after these stories were published, and it turned out that the Americans are pretty much listening to everyone, the U.S. was accused of hypocrisy. Is exposing or arguing that the U.S. is hypocritical important to you personally? The United States government, for instance, loves to claim that the value of surveillance is to stop terrorism. The United States government think that, that Angela Merkel is a terrorist or that Israeli democratically elected officials are involved in terrorism. The lies that have been told by the United States government have been revealed systematically by this reporting and the hypocrisy. namely that the U.S. government does exactly that which they claim its enemies in China and Iran and other places do, I think is very glaring as well. And I think it is important because no one country should be able to issue decrees to other countries while they violate those very same decrees in secret. Here in Israel, Snowden disclosures led to a growing demand to release the Israeli spy Jonathan Pollard, basically saying, you are spying on us, stop keeping this Israeli citizen in jail. Yeah, exactly. When the U.S. government goes around the world criticizing other people for spying on allies and prosecuting them, as you said, how are they going to maintain that with a straight face when they're doing exactly that? And I think you're absolutely right to contrast the Jonathan Pollard case with revelations of Americans spying on their closest allies within the Israeli government because it does underlie, underscore exactly the hypocrisy that lies at, so, at the center of so much of what the U.S. government does. 
And finally, what should we expect next? Will there be more Snowden stories related to Israel, to us? Yeah, so I don't want to preview any stories that aren't yet published, um, but it's definitely the case that there are a huge number of very significant stories that are left to report. We've only had these documents for seven months, which given their volume and complexity is not a very long time. There definitely are stories left that involve the Middle East, that involve Israel. The reporting is going to continue at, at roughly the same pace as it's been happening. So we will wait. Glenn Grinveld, thank you once again for this sure. interview. You're welcome. Bye-bye. ותודה למאיה לושי ומאיה רימר שסייעו בהפקת הראיון. הכנסת יוצאת למלחמה בהפצת סרטוני 